Um, I have an iPhone 8 Plus here with no display. Uh, he said, let me see what he said. <clears throat> see. Uh, okay, so they said <clears throat> the device powers on, however, it does not light up. Broken LCD. Okay, so it comes in and uh, I, what did I do? I stuck it on the ammeter. Ammeter didn't do anything really. I think it was like boot, looked like it was boot looping or something like that. So I disassembled the logic board and and um. It had obviously been like kind of heated up and stuff. You can kind of see it. Like I didn't do any of this, and then you know all this foam was taken off and stuff like that. And I just tried to power it on, um, and it wasn't. What was it doing? I think it was boot loop. I don't even remember what it was doing, but it was there was nothing on the screen, nothing at all. And uh, I don't think it was taking a charge. Actually, it wasn't taking a charge. So I so I took it apart, took the logic board out, and. I noticed that uh, you know this little hole right here, which this is, I think the second time I've seen something like this. But they put super glue on it to try to stick a little nub back, and uh, and so I know that um, there are some traces that run under the screw hole. So I I, I guess this is going to be iPhone 8 Plus long screw damage, you know, which is going to be somewhat common, I guess, at some point. Yeah. Um. um yeah. So I mean. With no display, you know, you also have these data filters over here, these LCD data filters that, um, like, I think there's one, two, three here, maybe four, and then there's also one over here as well, this one right here. So those those five little nubs can can cause um, no display. And um, so, anyways, no display, like, you know, that's kind of how you troubleshoot it. So the problem is. The XW doesn't really have any, they don't have the diode mode readings uh, for the iPhone 8 Plus yet. I imagine they probably will eventually, but they don't have them yet. So, um, I have a board here, uh, a logic board here, which, um, which uh, um, a guy named Ron sent me, which uh, I haven't talked to him in a while, but he's in New Jersey. And um, he sends me these iCloud lock boards. And anyways, thanks, thanks for your help, Ron. If you're watching, if you're still watching, I don't know what you're doing these days, but um, so anyways, so how do you troubleshoot something when you don't have uh, dial mode readings, whatever it is, you know, or if you don't have schematics or something like that, then how do you troubleshoot things? Well, the standard practice is, I don't know if it's the standard practice, but this is what I do, is, you know, you, you take dial mode readings and then you compare it, compare it to a known good board, and um in this case, since there's no display, I know I'm just look, really just spoke, concentrating on the LCD dis, uh, LCD digitizer connector, which is J5700 here. So I just went around and I just diode moded every single pad here um, on my donor board. And you know what? Let's see if I can just horizontally cascade this mother. Okay, let's horizontally cascade it again. Okay, so yeah, so you just go around and you dot mode it, and then and then you know it's a very time-consuming thing. It really sucks. No one really wants to do it, but you do it once, and then you're good to go. You know that's gonna help you solve some issues later on. Dot mode every single thing, and then you dot mode the the board you're working on. And I I discovered that well they were not all exactly the same. Um, I discovered that this one was was showing like point zero zero six five or something like that. Point zero Whatever, it wasn't fully short in diode mode, okay? But it was, it was like kind of shorted, but not fully short, okay? So what pin is this right here on the LCD connector? This is AP to display reset con L. Um, in the older models, like the six six S, whatever, it's it was AP to LCM con L, and we know that this is an important line for for the display to work, okay? So this one was partially short, okay? So what I ended up doing was um, you click on so the good thing about ZXW now is that I don't think anybody's gonna be able to to replace you know all the work they put into this. I don't think you know I don't know about the other ones, but phone board whatever, um, which is the free ZXW equivalent, and then I think it's like Wu Jan or something like that that has it. I, I've never even played without one, but those are the two schematic programs like ZXW tools. But the great thing about ZXW tools now they actually show every layer. Um, 
every layer in a logic board so it makes things a ton ton easier and it really helps you troubleshoot these things okay so for this one um, I just looked at layer 2 and you see all these gray lines here that, that wasn't there that's not there if you don't click on layer 2 if you click on layer 2 you'll see all, all the uh, layer 2 lines uh, in the logic board and then so basically you just kind of trace it down to the other side of the filter and then boom you see this red line that goes all the way across underneath and then underneath the screw hole here and um, and what else is there well this big one right here let's see I think I've already looked at it I think it's this is a Hydra so ACC so basically if you're not if you're having some charging problems right uh, this is gonna be like if it doesn't recognize the charger at all then it's possible that this line could be severed okay so that's another line let's see what else so so you got the ACC the Hydra you got the AP to display con reset line and then um, I think there's a touch line under here let's see let's see if I can find them all and then we can try to just kind of go through it a little bit so this is a touch line that goes underneath here right under a screw hole right next to the um, AP to display con line and then let's see you can kind of go through and click on all these but you'll you'll eventually you know um yeah so so anyways I'll I'll let you click through it but I think a lot of these are from the let's see okay here's one right here and which goes under there and then and then this one is this is a touch line okay so most of these pins you know come from the LCD display connector so I think you can probably assume that let's see um, no charging at all, um, no display, no touch. All right, so those are the main uh, symptoms of iPhone 8 Plus long screw damage. All right, so here's what I found after I disassembled it, and and I ended up just kind of scraping it down a little bit, and uh, stupid thing keeps popping up and down. All right, let's see. Okay, like that. Okay, so what you can do is, I mean, ah oh man, what am I doing? Okay, so what you can do uh, in terms of getting a better image of the lines, let me see if I can go down a little bit. Okay, so there's my line right there. So that's really close right now. And then let me see if I can focus my camera a little bit better. Ah, uh, stupid head keeps going up and down. Drive me crazy, man. Let's see, I can't think. <sighs> Put some sort of like crazy mount on this so it doesn't keep falling up and down. All right, pay so much for these damn scopes. All right, so that maybe maybe that's better. Okay, here's my thing again. Gonna zoom in. I zoomed in. All right, so what you can do is just really just turn your. Uh, scope light off use your um, use your uh, UV light uh, on the camera it's not very good <laughs> so you can't really see it very well on the camera but uh, I can see it on mine uh, maybe if I go back a little bit will that work no you can't really see it you can't see it in on the camera but anyways you have to trust me but anyways it works a lot better um, Works a lot better under the scope. So as you can see here, you can see the traces here, and you can dial, you can like you know check for continuity. But this is the the big uh, ACC to Hydra line. Um, this one right here is the line that was shorted actually. So this is the AP to display LCM. This is the one of the touch lines. This is ground, and then it keeps going on. Okay, you can keep scraping if you want. Um, so everything works right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is probably just kind of clean this up a little bit. Yeah, they super glued this mother. So, so, so I didn't really even have to fix any traces. Really, it, like none of the traces were really broken. It was just um, shorted. It was just shorted to one of, to to one of these other lines or ground or something like that. So, so, so I got a little lucky, I guess. Uh, but I'm going to put a little green stuff on it. And then, and then I'm gonna try to test everything and make sure everything is good on this, and then close it up. But um, 
if you have a no display on iPhone 8, uh, 8 Plus, I mean, you can kind of check for loss or damage. Um, let me just check this line one time. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Point four two two. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so so anyways, I just wanted to point this out, and um, I think a lot of people have problems troubleshooting issues, you know, and 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 uh, you know this is this is what I go through when I troubleshoot something that I I'm kind of flying blind on, you know. Somebody brings in the device and they're like, oh, can you help me fix this? And I'm like, oh, I don't really have schematics for it, whatever. You know, this this is kind of what you need to do. I mean, if you don't have if you don't have um if you don't have any donor boards, or whatever, then you know if you really want to fix it, then you're gonna have to go buy one. That's what it comes down to, you know. So, so yeah, no display iPhone 8 Plus, uh, long screen damage, and I didn't even have to run any traces. So, all right. So I think that's it for now. I think I'll just I'll go, <laughs> and then when I have another one that I have to repair, then I'll I'll do a more comprehensive, detailed video on how to do it, but. Uh, that's about it for now. Um, let's see. Is there anything else to talk about, Sandy? Nothing else. Nothing. Nothing else in the world of micro soldering. Um, Sandy says, "Keep sending the business." <laughs> okay. All right. So I, I, I imagine you guys are watching it, but uh, I don't know what kind of audience I have. Do I have people that other people that are experienced watching this, or do I have people like broke their phone? watching this um, and then I have people that kinda just comment um, saying good job and stuff like that so I don't, I don't know who the hell watches this but maybe no one watches it <laughs> I definitely don't get as many views as the other people that show their faces <laughs> like uh, like uh, Jason over at STS or uh, Lewis uh, Jessa um, I guess those are the ones that kinda stick out uh, for me and uh, I guess Rico, I guess he's kind of made a name for himself now. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, you know, I was really contemplating whether I should set up a ha, do a nice little setup or not because I was watching uh, I was watching somebody else's channel. I think his name is Tronix Fix or something like that. And he, he had a really nice setup. Like his videos are really really good. Um, and I think he only does micro soldering on gaming consoles. And I looked at his website and stuff like that. Stole a few things. <laughs> Stole a few ideas. And uh, and yeah. Uh, so I was contemplating whether I should do a little nice little setup, and then I can I can work on some more core stuff, and uh, have some really high quality repair videos, you know. But uh, my my one of my last videos was a 4K video, and and. Uh, uh, come to find out that the video is not actually in 4K, and, and, and the limiting factor was the actual squ scope head. That's what someone said. So, so I guess my dreams of having a 4K micro soldering video uh, was just dashed. Uh, but maybe we'll revisit that uh, somewhere down somewhere down the line with a better scope head um, that someone has yet to invent, or maybe it's invented already, but. So I guess maybe, I guess maybe this hole right here could have some issues too. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. It's uh, what's what's today? Thursday. Uh, we got another day left. Okay. Anyways, um, I'll think of some more stuff to yap about. Maybe we'll just uh, talk about micro soldering and where where the industry is headed. I think that's probably weighing on a lot of people's minds, right? Where is micro soldering headed? Um. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think I'll get into it right now. But uh, I have a, I have a lot of thoughts on that. Uh, but uh, uh, all right. Anyways, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to learn how to do this kind of stuff, buy our online course at Udemy. Um, if you have any questions, don't post on YouTube. Post on the micro, the free micro soldering forum. I know the other guys charge money, but ours is free, and I will answer, personally answer every question that you have. On the forum, I'm just gonna microsoldering.com and click on forums up top. Um, I think that's about it for now. All right, peace. So I just wanted to say thank you for watching this channel, and I wanted to promote our online microsoldering course. Um, we have it hosted at udemy.com. 
and it's at this point it's four hours of video instruction um, the reviews are pretty good um, and we talk about everything from the basics uh, of, of an iPhone logic board um, and then we have a section on ZXW tools um, we have a little section about how to set up your hot air rework station your micro soldering um, station and how to use diode mode uh, the third part is the three most common repairs which is no touch no backlight no charge and the fourth part is all about data recovery so um, if you go through our website it's a hundred bucks and some people say that learning online is not the best way of doing things or you can't learn micro soldering online I beg to differ um, I don't know about you guys but I started watching YouTube videos when I first started about three years ago and that's how I learned it um, and not only that but you know you go to a live course some people like live courses but not everybody has three thousand dollars to spend on a live course right so um, and then yes you're right you can go to YouTube and watch all these videos um, but you're not gonna when people make these videos they don't go from A to Z they usually start from somewhere in the middle because they assume that you watch something earlier on or one of their earlier videos so this course is all-encompassing it has everything from A to Z um, to help you get started in micro soldering and we are adding stuff um, on a weekly maybe monthly basis and we're, we're gonna just gonna keep adding to this thing and um, so if you want to get started just I mean you can also take a class but uh, you know to get your feet wet I think this is the best thing to do right here and I vouch for it. Um, thanks for watching the video. I was also going to say, um, in order to buy it with a discount, $50 discount, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then it's going to be the first item on here. You click on buy at Udemy, and that'll give you the $50 off. Thanks.